love you. And with that said, there is a word from the Lord. Solomon says in our text, particularly the 8th verse, better is the end of a thing than its beginning. And Job reminds us in Job 8, verse 7, though your beginning was small, your latter days will be very great. On last Sunday, I said I want to leave a legacy. I admonished you to do something. And we talked about how we're in a position of transition. We're in a period of transition. I suggested that many times people believe that just because there's a change in leadership, then things won't be the same. Or they began to expect the worst and anticipate a decrease in the quality of worship, perhaps a decrease in the quality of the sermons. Now I realize that having said that, that there's an assumption that's being made. The assumption is that things have been good in the first place. All right. All right. And though I'm slightly biased, I believe that they have been. To be told, many of us are the same way in our lives. The last thing we want is change. Hello, somebody. Now, our text encourages us and suggests that regardless of what's going on, things will get better in the end. Say amen, somebody. Amen. It shows us that you might not always have somebody in your corner. I see in these passages of tantalizing text that there's always been haters. Y'all know what haters are, don't you? Haters got hate. Somebody needs to know that your haters really make you greater. Yeah. But you got to understand what's going on in the text to really see how the end is better than the beginning. Um, because many of us who have been married a while think that it was better earlier. But some of us who made it through the hump know that it's better now. Amen. 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 I know I had one. Amen in the house. Here we see the reasoning of Job's friend Bildad. He wanted to prove that Job couldn't possibly be an upright man. Because if he were, his wealth would keep increasing. He'd keep having it going on. Sound like any gospel you ever heard before? Well, Bill Dad thought that if Job would have had any trouble, God would move on his behalf and make him prosper. And though all his family had been destroyed and all his wealth had been scattered to the four corners of the earth, yet if he were a godly man, God would surely show up and his latter end would be greatly increased. Now, here's, here's something I tell you. Bildad was sincere. But like a lot of folks, I know you don't know any like this, but like a lot of folks, Bildad was also sincerely wrong. Y'all don't have anybody like that. And, and, and that's why you got to be careful who you allow to speak into your life. That's why it's important when you're going through something, you can't just go to anybody. You gotta be careful when you tell what's going on, particularly in your private life. Yes. But that's yet another sermon. Today I'm not trying to give you some false hope, nor do I desire to give you a false sense of security, but I do want to encourage you and I hope to tell you so you can understand how to look at what may what you may be dealing with today and what you may be going through right now or what you might be facing in the days to come. Let me show you kids right here and ask you something. I realize a lot of folks, even churches are using Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Some of you might be on Facebook right now. Put it up. <laughs> and don't try to get over talking about what you're doing in church. Put it up. But that's the question that we're answering on Facebook is what are you doing? This, however, is a question for us to ponder beyond Facebook and Twitter. In fact, if we don't answer this question in our own lives, we have no direction. We're 
in essence, just passing time. And I know if we're to be honest today, we admit that some of us are seemingly just going through the motions, just passing time. And not only do we not have direction, some of us are wondering, what is my purpose? Amen. Have a right life. Amen. I mean, has anybody ever gotten to the place in your life where you wonder, does my life really matter? Or what does it all mean? All this energy and effort and working and serving and studying, going through what I go through, is it really necessary? Is it making a difference at all? Truth be told, we all find ourselves in this place at some point in our lives. We all ask these questions in some form or another. We ask, why? Or at least we're tempted to ask God, why? We're sometimes afraid of the answer, but we're, in our bellies, we want to say, God, why? Or why me? We know we're... Particularly if you're here today, chances are you're living a good life. Trying to do the right thing. Working hard to be good people. Trying to be good church folk. Good parents and good students and good Christians. And yet, we still have bad things happening in our lives. Yeah. And we want to know why. Yeah. How am I talking to anybody? Yeah. I know it ain't easy, but if, if you can imagine, in life it does seem that the end is better than the beginning. Think about it. Let me unpack it. If you ever had to travel back and forth to the mainland or, or, or God forbid, to Korea, Japan, um, it, it, it can be tiring, but not just that. Um, worse if you go on TDY, because it's really sometimes places you don't necessarily want to go. But if you've ever taken a road trip, anything like this, I'm sure you found out that the trip is definitely better than the beginning. I'll never forget, my wife and I used to drive from Atlanta to Louisiana. And the drive was about 10 hours. But we made it right to the outskirts of Atlanta. And you can see the skyline. And it was almost as if we got a second wind. At least I did. Because she was asleep. <laughs> of the thing. So the end can be better than the beginning. Kind of like when you drive to Bellows, as heavy as the traffic may get from here to Bellows, whether you go H3 or H1, regardless of which way you go, when you get to Bellows, you almost forget the traffic because it's so beautiful. Am I right about it? I told folks, and some of you can attest, when, when, when we deploy, when soldiers deploy, it's kind of crazy. But starting day one, you begin thinking about coming home. You already know you're going to be gone six months, a year, 18 months, but you start counting down. i never forget, and I thought it was a cruel joke. I got there, and a guy showed me his computer. He said, this is my picture. And it had a countdown, and however many days you go, it went from desert to paradise. He showed me mine and it was all desert. <laughs> he showed me his and it was about a slice short of paradise. But that's what we do. Day one, I remember looking at that desert. But I also remember 364 days later looking at that slice. In just about a week, I'll be at the house with mama. <laughs> it's because it encourages us. To have something to look forward to, even if it's a far off. Say amen to that. Amen. So as I prepare to preach my last sermon as your pastor, I want to encourage your hearts and leave you with a lasting impression as I preach, teach from the topic, your ladder shall be greater than your past. Your ladder shall be greater than your past. When I consider our text, I'm reminded about the days and the challenges that we often face. It reminds me of days like today. And I don't mind telling you that I've really dreaded this day. It's lingered in my mind for months now. Some of you who are close to me know how I've really contemplated what this day would look like for as probably as far as six months ago. 
Um, it's caused me some heartache and it's trouble in my mind as I consider leaving. But this message is bigger than today. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than what I'm going through. It's bigger than what I'm dealing with. This message is for all of us. But nonetheless, I believe, even without knowing each of your stories, that we've all had some trying times. Tell me if I'm right about it. Think about it. Our soldiers, though supposedly all home, are still deployed. Some are still deployed. Promotions seemingly are down. Careers are ending, and soldiers are being put out of the military in numbers unlike any before. I'm sure some of us, and not all of us, have had, or uh, we're having some times that we feel pressure. Anybody know about pressure? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now let me ask you something. I, I brought something for you. I want to know, have, have you ever paid attention to labels on stuff? I mean, just some of the stuff that you use. Disinfectant, Pam, y'all use this stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, sunscreen, all of this stuff. And, well, let, let, let me tell you something. Have you ever noticed what the labels say? Listen, warning. Contents under pressure. Do not puncture or incinerate. Do not throw in fire. Most of them say keep out of reach of children. Harmful or fatal if swallowed. Anything. But I realize if it, 
if we are to tell the truth of the matter, and the truth being that the latter is greater than the past, or the end being greater than the beginning, there's a few things that we got to do. First, we have to let go of our mistakes. We have to let go of our mistakes. Better still, we have to let go of our past. And I know we think we do a pretty good job of it. But some of us are holding on to guilt and shame, and we need to let it go. We can't really hold on to, nor can we change what's already happened. We can move forward, but we can't change what's already done. And you can't listen to folks who are stuck in the past. Now, let me, let, me, let me just tell you something about that for a second here. When I say you can't listen to folks who are stuck in the past, it's like when you go home, and all of us got somewhere to go, we call home away from home. But I'm talking about that home where you grew up, where they called you skier and cookie. <laughs> Bubba. Hey. Y'all know, you know. When you go back and you dress up in your Sunday best and you go tell them how good things the Lord has done in your life, they say, but I know you win. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm worried about what folks say. I'm worried about what they say you should, could have done. You got to know that you can move forward. See, that, that was the case with, with Joe's friend Bill Dad. He said something mean and cold-blooded about Joe's kids. Y'all know the story? He said the children obviously sinned against God. So their punishment was well-deserved. Chapter 2, I think I might have had to have some words with old Bill Dad. He was like a lot of Y'all don't mind if I just take my time, do you? He was like a lot of church folk. A lot of religious folks, really, not just church folk. Religious folk. He was shallow in his theology. He was shallow in his philosophy. He said, if you'll pray, everything will be okay. Well, some of us have lived long enough, been around enough, seen enough to know that sometimes you can pray for a thing and God's answer will be not yet or no altogether. You might have to go through to get to. If you pray and see God's favor, God will rise up and restore your happy home. I wonder if anybody's praying and things didn't work out the way you thought they should have. Now, sometimes we just simply can't see all that God's plan is for our lives. And I'm not trying to minimize the power of prayer. Please don't get me wrong. I was going to say, don't get it to it. <laughs> it's my last one. I can do whatever I want to do here.
said before, I wish I had a pocket full of do-overs. I just say do-over, do-over. Think about it. Perhaps you're mindful of opportunities you could have missed and mistakes that you made. And I know, <coughs> excuse me, I know regrets hurt. And often the pain lingers and you may even question whether or not the end is really better than the beginning. Amen? Amen. So many of us say, I wish I could do this over. I wish I could turn back the hands of time. I wish I could fix this. I wish I could fix that. Like I say, I wish I had some do-overs. And, and I hear, I hear what you're saying. But I don't want to go through what I've already gone through. Amen. I don't want to do it over again. Amen. It's just something I say. Amen. I have been through enough. Ain't no way I want to go through it again. I mean, think about it. Bro, I started off as a private E1, what they call fuzzy now. It wasn't fuzzy back then because our rank was up here. Yep. Some of them still look like I don't know what they I started off as an E1. And I remember being so proud when those mosquito wings could hold my collar down. I thought I could walk on water when they put a rock on that mosquito wing. And you couldn't tell me a thing as a specialist. <laughs> and you know I was in charge as a sergeant. <laughs> but now, as a lieutenant colonel, ain't no way I want to be a private in. <laughs> Got the wrong privates. Got to have privates. Amen. But I don't want to be one. <laughs>
If you end up here in your life, if you're dreading the future, if you're in the midst of uncertain times, I hear you, Lord. Be encouraged in this promise and know the end of a thing is better than its beginning. Amen. So we have to let go of our mistakes. We have to live in our hope. Third and last thing, we have to look to our promise. Somebody say promise. Promise. Listen, we live in a microwave society. Everything tells us that we should get it now. We have to do it now. We want it now. Everybody's seeking instant satisfaction, instant gratification. It seems everybody's in a hurry to get somewhere to go nowhere. But God says that we should wait for God's time. My mama would have said it this way, but might not be better. You can't hurry God. You just got to wait. Maybe you heard it this way. He may not come when you want it, but he's always right on time. And I like what Isaiah said, Bishop. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be weary. It's in the way that we learn to rely and trust in God. The world lives with the present in mind, but we got to live with the future in mind. We got to live for and look to God's promises. Say amen to God. Whatever happens, if you stay faithful to God, then the end will be better than the beginning. Can I get some help in here? If you're struggling to hold on to your faith, be encouraged. The end will be better, and it is worth waiting for. Let me press my claim as I go to the sea. Paul said the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. He said in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. You might not know it, and it may not seem like it, but it is due season. Yeah, somebody heard what I just said. So you see, there's some things that are in store for you right now. There's some blessings in store for you, brother, right now. I know it's hard to believe, but as I said before, you got to have a mental picture of your preferred future. You got to see it right now. You got to see your blessings come right now. You got to see what you want from God right now. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to see the change you want right now. You got to look beyond your current situation right now. You got to look beyond your past right now. You got to see the unseeable right now. You got to see what other folks can't see right now. You got to walk by faith right now and not by sight right now. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You got to see your promise right now. Sometimes you got to close your eyes just so you can see. Tell somebody, you got to expect God to do it right now.